happens before launch. So keep your eye open for that. Yes, sir. We start the Vulcan engine first, then we check its health before we ignite the boosters. That's right, sir. We will have a seven-second delay between um, ignition and liftoff. Coming up to the one-minute mark. À tous de DDO, attention pour H0 moins une minute. All electrical systems being switched to flight mode. Top, H0 moins une minute. We're live at the Ghana Space Center for the launch of an Ariane 5 ECA. We're orbiting two passengers today, Echo Star 17 for Hughes and MSG Free for Umitsat. Welcome if you are just joining us. Our very best wishes to our customers and to everybody who's worked so hard to bring us to today's launch. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité. Top, allumage moteur Vulcan. Allumage confirmé. Top, allumage EAP, décollage. Top, Première manœuvre, orientation du lanceur. Les paramètres à bord sont normaux, la trajectoire est nominale. And there she goes, hauling herself against the gravity of the Earth. We've rotated to the east, we're heading out over the Atlantic. We're burning three engines, the Vulcan, which uh, we did light on the ground, but actually it's those two boosters which are doing all the work here. In fact, their job's really to get us away from the gravity of the Earth, isn't it? Yes, the boosters are providing 90% of the thrust right now, and each booster is burning two tons of propellant per second. To give you an idea, if you fill your car once a week, that's how much gas you'd use in a year. And we're just hearing it. We're 15 kilometers from the pad, Simon. We're just getting the sound of uh, the launcher as it flies over. In fact, we can uh, even feel the vibrations, can't we? It doesn't oh, take a little while for the sound to get you, though, doesn't it? Well, like you say, 15 kilometers from the pad, but we do feel it. And, of course, those in launch control, they too will certainly be feeling this. Uh, it's quite sensational. What's it like for the satellites in there? They too will be feeling some dynamics right now. They get acoustic vibrations at launch, we flood the pad with water to dampen this effect, and then they get another round of acoustics as we pass through the sound barrier. Though the satellites are very well prepared for this, it's all part of a plan. We're very lucky tonight. We are having beautiful clear skies. Uh, we uh, could have had a few clouds, but we haven't. So we're getting these phenomenal images of Ariane as she flies through that, uh, what looks like a blue, blue sky, heading into space. And here on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the trajectory. Just talk us through that briefly. Yes, sir. The curve, this is a computer simulation of the actual trajectory. The white dot on the curve, that's the actual position of the launch vehicle right now. The V means the velocity, and the A means the altitude. Now we can see those boosters separating and um, heading back down to Earth. Basically, they've burnt all their fuel. We don't need them anymore. And there they are. We're losing weight. Yes, we've lost about three quarters of our weight, in fact, in just over the two minutes. The lighter we are, the more efficient we are, and the faster we can go. Absolutely, and that's why we jettison parts throughout the flight once we no longer need them. So now the main stage is doing all the work. We can see it. That's the dot in the middle of the, uh, the two boosters there. That's right. It's a huge tank of cryogenic propellant, and it's going to burn for nine minutes in total. And the fairing is the structure that we saw earlier at the top of the vehicle, which is protecting the satellites from the rigors of uh, the launch. Uh, one of those, of course, we haven't mentioned is uh, friction. Indeed, and yes, the launch is flying through our dense atmosphere at a very high speed. And we can, uh, we're getting confirmation now that the uh, fairing has separated. Uh, the fairing is, uh, 
we're effectively technically in space, and you can see it there falling in two parts back down to Earth. We don't need it anymore because, of course, there's no friction in space. Indeed, yes. The atmosphere is about 100 kilometers uh, deep. Any remaining gas up there, it's so thin, the satellites are now safe from the effects of the atmosphere. And there we go. We can see our two passengers for the first time. That's Echo Star 17 at the front, and MSG3 is behind, but we can't actually see it yet. No, that's right. It's hidden underneath a black structure, what we call the cylinder, and it's designed especially to enable Ariane to launch two satellites at the same time. And this year, the Ariane Space family of launches has grown to three. It's been busy times at Ariane Space. In May, it was mission accomplished once again for Ariane 5, when she successfully launched JCSAT-13 for Japan and Venusat-2 for Vietnam. Ariane Space has now launched over 300 satellites from the Kiana Space Center. The next size launch vehicle from CSG is now taking shape, ready for an autumn launch. It'll carry two more Galileo satellites for Europe's navigation program. They'll join the first pair, which Ariane Space launched during the maiden flight of Soyuz from CSG last October. Ariane Space has signed a contract to launch the DZZ-HR satellite for Kazakhstan. Built by Astrium, the high-resolution observation satellite will be delivered into a sun-synchronous orbit by Ariane Space's light launcher, Vega. The annual general meeting of shareholders of Starsem approved the company's financial statements for 2011. It also named a new board of directors, which renewed Johnny Vlegal as chairman and CEO and Viktor Nikolaev as chief operating officer. During the SACOM Africa conference in Johannesburg, Jean-Yves Le Gall and sales director Florent Deilly demonstrated how innovation can drive access to markets in South Africa. Communications and IT professionals from over 100 countries attended this year's 22nd Communic Asia trade show in Singapore, where Ariane Space reaffirmed its position as the benchmark launch service provider. Jean-Yves Legal was one of three panelists during the plenary session at the G20 Investment Summit in Paris. The subject for debate was strategy and innovation. Angela Fontana has been appointed a special advisor to Jean-Yves Legal, consulting on decisions relating to the exploitation of Vega after its successful qualification flight. Well, we're heading out across the Atlantic. What's our speed and altitude? Just approaching four kilometers per second, and we have an altitude of almost 170 kilometers. And we're burning the main stage. It's powered by the Vulcan engine, which we ignited on the ground, and it's extremely powerful, isn't it? Indeed, and right now it's delivering more than a 1,000 kilonewtons of thrust and in the vacuum of space. And if you think that one newton is the force of one apple falling on Sir Isaac Newton's head, then that's over one million apples. <laughs> That's going to hurt. Um, the Vulcan engine is actually built by Snecma, which is a company based in France. It is, and this is the 1,200th engine in the Ariane family since the first launch more than 30 years ago. So congratulations to the Snecma team on this impressive milestone. Well, the parameters are nominal. Echo Star 17 is our first satellite to be separated. Teams have been working for a couple of months here at the Guyana Space Center to prepare it. Echostar 17, with Jupiter High Throughput Technology, is the world's most advanced KA-band satellite network. It will allow us to expand from our HughesNet service from 640,000 subscribers today to an estimated 1.5 to 2 million subscribers in the future. HughesNet is a high-speed internet service to consumers in North America. It provides internet to the home, and Hughes has been selling this for many years, and Echostar is just the next step in the HughesNet brand. Echostar 17 builds on our award-winning KA-band Spaceway 3 satellite, which Ariane Space launched for us in 2007. It's currently carrying over a half a million customers and is the world's largest KA-band system. Once Echostar is positioned in its orbital spot and testing is finished, we will launch our HughesNet Gen 4 service offering, providing a media-rich world like we've never seen before of high speed wherever people want to live and work. Hughes selected Ariane Space for several reasons. First of all, you guys provided us a very successful launch for Spaceway 3. You have a proven track record with very good reliability and excellent availability. Plus, you have good customer service and you're very easy to get along with. Now, we're tracking the launcher using ground stations as she flies over, and we've just received a signal from the second one. That's Natal in 
Brazil. For anyone who's not familiar um, with the flight, it's called telemetry. Yes, and Ariane sends data to each of these ground stations. This tells us how the flight is progressing in real time. Later, we analyze this data to see how the vehicle has actually performed. That's what we call the level zero flight evaluation. And um, there are uh, five ground stations. There's Gaio in, uh, Gai Gaio, uh, in Kuru. There's Natal in Brazil. Ascension Island, which is in the middle of the Atlantic. Then there's uh, Libreville, which is uh, in Gabon, the west coast of Africa. And, of course, Malindi is um, in Kenya, which is, of course, on the east coast uh, of Africa. Extinction du premier étage sur commande de guidage. Now, the, the main stage has cut off. Séparation du premier étage. The engine has switched off because it's burnt all its propellant and it's now jettisoning the main stage. The, we're igniting the upper stage. Étage, ESC, Certainly, now, we started with 780 tons and now we have approximately 28 tons left. So that's only 3% of our vidéo. original mass. Absolutely. We're certainly shedding weight. There's no question about that. So, Simon, we're now burning the upper stage, and its job is to deliver the satellites to their transfer orbits, which is the position in space where they can separate from the launcher. Indeed. The upper stage, it's a complex piece of engineering. Again, we're burning cryogenic propellants, but this time only 15 tons worth. And we'll burn the upper stage's single combustion chamber for approximately 16 minutes. Echo Star 17 is an all KA band broadband satellite, and uh, it was designed and built by Space Systems Loral for Hughes. There's no question that Echo Star 17 is certainly a fantastic piece of technology. Space Systems Loral is the leader in providing high capacity satellites for broadband communications. With four decades of experience building communication systems using the KA band spectrum, Echo Star 17 with Jupiter high throughput technology is an all KA band broadband satellite designed to provide more than 100 gigabits per second capacity to Hughes' rapidly growing HughesNet subscriber base in North America. Based on the Space Proven 1300 platform, the satellite was designed with a complex multi-spot beam architecture that focuses capacity on the areas in North America with the highest traffic demand, providing enhanced services for both consumers and businesses. It takes hundreds of people and more than a million man hours to design, build, and test a satellite of the size and complexity of Echo Star 17. I'd like to take this uh opportunity to thank uh, Feldman Call and his uh, team for giving Spaces to allow the opportunity to design and manufacture a very high capacity uh, satellite. In alignment with its vision to create space-based solutions that improve the human experience, Space Systems Loral commends Hughes for its commitment to provide high-speed connectivity to the people of North America who might otherwise not have access to many of the important benefits of the Internet. So we are coming up to 12 minutes into the flight, and uh, the upper stage is powering us across the Atlantic. What sort of speeds are we doing at the moment? Now we're at 7.3 kilometers per second, and we have an altitude of 170 kilometers. I mean, these speeds are really quite something, aren't they? And uh, really difficult to digest. It's, it's so fast, and of course we're going to get faster. Indeed, and if you think about this speed, and currently the fastest man in the world, Usain Bolt, he would have to run more than 740 times faster to catch up right now. <laughs> That's quite an image. Don't blink at the London Olympics then. Um, Echo Star 17 is the first satellite to be released.